So basically, I want to start by saying that we all, I think, like networks here, and networks are great. Um, they've been used in the past decades to study and understand much better, hopefully, a lot of complex systems. And so they're basically sets of nodes linked by pairwise interactions, and that's what we most often use. Now, they're great, but uh, one of their restrictions is that they don't take into account group interactions which is a powerful uh, simplification in some cases, but sometimes can hide some things that are happening. So for example, if you have this kind of models, you don't really know if what you have be behind it is really three pairwise interactions or if it might be just actually a group interaction. And a very simple example for this type of, uh, of case is co-authorship networks, for example. Imagine each of the nodes is an author and then this would represent three papers with two authors each, but this would represent one paper with three authors, which is obviously not the same. And if you both represent them with this type of network, then you lose this information. So that's the motivation, and this case is very clear, of course. It's not always as clear from data, but there's evidence that in many cases, uh, there's actual group interactions that are there, and that taking them into account might change our understanding of the system. Some examples here are the co-authorship networks that I just mentioned, but also multi-reactant chemical reactions where sometimes you need at least three molecules or three uh, reactants to have a reaction. And then there's also neurons that receive multiple synaptic inputs or there's reinforcements dynamics in social dynamics. In these cases, it's not always as clear how to uh, see that directly from the data but there is hints. If you want to see more, uh, we wrote a big review paper on all these, uh, on all these group interactions uh, from structure and dynamics, and I, I, I wrote the main section on, on synchronization. So basically now, uh, what about synchronization with these group interactions? How can we see them? Where, where are they? I mentioned multiple synaptic inputs, for example, for two neurons. But there's one thing that's nice in synchronization is that they also naturally appear if you go from nonlinear oscillators with pairwise interaction and then you simplify these models, so from phase reduction. So say, for example, you start with a model like this where you have a nonlinear oscillator and they're, they're all coupled basically pairwise, so just two by two. But then you want to have a simpler, a simpler um, description of the system. So you apply some reduction techniques to then end up with a system that's uh, describing the system just in terms of simple phases. And so to go from this, this to this, you can apply some um, ex, uh, ex, expansion techniques. And so if you go to the second order, then you can see appearing uh, some uh, triplet interactions, for example, here, in, in addition to the simple pairwise interactions. And so that is a way already where we know they can appear just from these phase reduction techniques. So then what is the implication of having these types of terms? How is it gonna change the structure, but also the dynamics of synchronization? That's what we want to, want to see. Uh, one, of the, one of the papers on these phase reduction techniques is uh, from uh, Arkady and Misha and, and Eric Gengel. And so basically we go from this type of descriptions to this type of descriptions, now we can have uh, triangles that are filled, we can have a tetrahedra, that's the, just a visual representation of them. And there's been already uh, a few studies on that and actually recently many more, but people have showed that having these interactions can change the dynamics quite significantly and can, for example, make you go from a continuous transition to synchronization to an explosive one, can also favor chaos, can also favor cluster synchronization, and uh, can be, so we can also infer these uh, hopefully sometimes from, from data. Okay, so what did we do in all of this now? Um, the, the talk is going to be in two parts. First, I'm going to show you the types of models that we use, and then uh, the multi order Laplacian that we developed basically as an extension to the normal graph Laplacian to study uh, the stability of synchronization in, in those types of models. And then I'm going to show you how we use this Laplacian then to ask a main question that was, do group interaction always promote synchronization or not? And what can we learn from this? 
So that's it. Uh, we're going to start now, but feel free to interrupt me at any time. OK. So the audience here now is a bit broad, so we're going to start uh, with the basic a bit uh, slowly. But basically, the, usually how it's done in pair, with pairwise interaction, when you want to study the stability of oscillators uh, that are identical, then you can look at the Laplacian, which is a linear operator, and around full synchronization. And then you can compute its eigenvalues that will tell you about its stability. So it's a fairly simple procedure. And what we did was to extend this to another Laplacian matrix that includes these group interactions. And so usually you have some types of equation like this. So I'm writing the equations. Later on, they will look a bit more complicated. If you like them, it's great. If you don't like them, I put colors so that you can hopefully follow easily just by understanding which term does what. So blue is going to be the pairwise terms. So here you just have a pairwise interaction between these oscillators, and these are, describe the evolution of the population of oscillators. And we know that synchronization uh, here exists when all the phases are, are the same. And we want to know if it's stable or not. So typically what we do is you can rewrite, uh, you can linearize the previous system and rewrite it in terms of this linear operator, which is the Laplacian, defined like this, where here we have uh, the degree of the nodes, and here we have the adjacency matrix. So it's really in terms of its structure. And then, if you compute its eigenvalues, you can then determine um, dynamical properties uh, of its stability. OK, so we're going to look at the second Lyapunov exponents. And if it's negative, then we have stability. Great. So now. You, you are all the time calling this eigenvalue Lyapunov exponent. Why is that? Because in this case, I can actually, yeah, it's also the, there's just a, a sign of difference between the Laplacian eigen value. I think value. Of exponents, they're very complicated nonlinear quantities. I think that they're not related. To in general, yeah, but here I can, it, in this case, it's the same with a sign difference. I don't think so. I, I think this is, for the, this is for the heat flow on your graph, right? No, this is linear dynamics. Yeah. yeah. So okay. you can linearize everything. Right, we can talk later. OK, yeah, sure. Yeah, but Laplacian is a linear operator, so that's No, but uh, the not exponent of the full equations is not captured by this eigenvalue. Well, I don't know if you're saying that. I mean, is the, is the linear, is the, um, the exponent describes the linear dynamics around full synchronization, so you can okay. write anything. It's, it's, you have a nonlinear equation, you have a Lyapunov exponent, which yeah. is complicated. Then you linearize and compute an eigenvalue. This yeah. eigenvalue is not the same as the Lyapunov exponent. But it's OK. I, we can discuss later, but OK. I just ask you, if lambda 2 negative, does that mean that your graph is, you mean negative, uh, negative as opposed to zero? And yes. So you just have one component, one connected. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's all connected. Yeah, yeah. And I also think so, don't you mean positive? <laughs> well, <laughs> because, <laughs> because you have a definition. I think your operator is positive, some definite. So if you look, oops, so it's going to be positive if it's, if it's the eigen value of the Laplacian, but here is the Lyapunov exponent, so that's what I was saying, I put on it. There's a minus sign, so it's negative. But if you look at the eigenvalue, it's going to be positive. It's, it's the same. So here is just a convention, so here I'm denoting. So lambda 2 is not the spectral gap of this operation? It is. I mean, not of this one, like some minus, minus this one. <laughs> But it's, yeah. So you Is everybody confused now? Or? <laughs> hmm? So you consider all the eigenvalues are negative, except one zero. Yeah, so there's like a zero one, and then all the others are negative, and this one is the first non-zero one. Yeah. So basically, you consider minus what you define. Exactly. Yeah. So you want your graph to be connected. Yeah, yeah, sure. The, the graph is connected, and yeah. So we're going to look at how this eigenvalue, basically, or Lyapunov exponent, uh, changes with the group interactions. And yeah, good. <laughs> okay, let's keep uh, going. So now, um, as I was saying, we have more terms. Uh, this is just a term that we had before, and now we had all these terms 
uh, for each of the different size of groups, right? So this orange term now includes triplet interactions with three oscillators. This green one now has four oscillators, and we can actually go up to any number of oscillators, which is then written like that. Okay, so the question is, can we do the same type of procedure now to study the, the, the linear, linear dynamics? And uh, we actually can. So I just want to point out now that here we have different possibilities for the choice of coupling functions, which we didn't have here, because you could have also uh, j minus k, uh, sorry, 2j minus 1k minus i. Uh, we show also that in the, when you linearize things, then it's going to lead to different uh, factors, but we can still treat them all with this uh, framework. So we want to know if uh, synchronization is linear stable, and for that, we actually can introduce another operator, which is similar to the previous one, and reduce the linear dynamics of these full complicated uh, equations with all the, the different terms into this simple one. And how we do that is by defining this uh, multi-order Laplacian as the following, which is a weighted sum of different Laplacians for each other orders that we define. So we have a Laplacian that was the, the pairwise Laplacian at order one, then we have another one at order two, etc. And if you Way, like I take the weighted term, you, you incorporate all different orders there. How, how would, yep. So this gamma, is that like absolute, absolute square? Is yeah, sorry, gamma here is the coupling strength, absolutely. So uh, this is the, the coupling strength, if you go back there, is the coupling strength for order one, then you have the coupling strength for order two, yeah. Oh, I see, but you don't think of it like absolute and absolute square? So that was the motivation. In this case, we don't see it like that, but we can always set gamma two to be gamma one squared. So here it's, we put them as freely as we can, more generally, but we can go back to that, uh, to that case, yes. Okay. Uh, excuse me, but there should be more indices in high orders. Why you have only two, because in the previous slide you said uh, J, L, M. Look, where is it? Sorry. Um, here, this one? No, previous. No, where you have this. Yeah. This one? A, B, C, they have more indices. They do. How yeah, yeah. Do you they do. Okay. Do with this extra indices. Sure. So here, if you have AIJ, it's the usual incidence matrix. So uh, you're, it's going to be one if I and J have a pairwise link. This one is BIJK, so it's going to be one if IJK have a triangle link, if you wish, but zero, zero otherwise. So we have more indices as we go up in the order. So what we do is we kind of define, th this matrix here tells you the number of pairwise uh, interactions between I and G. So we, c we define higher order adjacency matrices which tell you the number, so it's going to be, sorry, here, this one. So we have Aij of order D, which is the number of D simplices that I and J share. And that only has two indices because it's I and J. And so it's a natural generalization of the other, the pairwise I, Aij. And as we can have the same for the degree, so we generalize the normal degree. And instead of having that Ki is the number of pairwise uh, neighbors, if you wish, we now have it that it's the number of uh, these simplices uh, neighbors. So the number of uh, neighbors that are included in D order interactions. And because of that, we can define this with only two indices because it's just depending on I and J and not on I, J, K anymore. And so it's fine for all orders. There's other ways of doing it, but that's the way we do it. Yeah. So you have these now higher order um, Laplacian matrices for each order, and you can combine them to get all orders at the same time. And so now you can basically compute the eigenvalues of these matrices and see what happens. Uh, the first easy case that we looked at was when you have everything that's coupled with uh, attractive coupling. And so in this case, we can actually derive everything analytically with the, with the 
uh, eigenvalues, and we saw that the so this eigenvalue or Laplace uh, Lyapunov exponent is actually um, proportional to the size of the groups. So it's going to change with the different sizes. And you can see that by, for example, if you only have pairwise interaction and look at how fast it synchronizes over time, it's going to take you up to, for example, in this case here to synchronize. But if you instead uh, put only triangle interactions, it's going to be a bit faster. And you can derive all of these for different sizes of networks. And then if you, of course, combine all of these different orders, not just look at them separately, then you will see that the synchronization will be more stable because you just add more interactions that are stable, that make the system stable, and so on. All, all in all, it's going to be more stable. So that is the idea. Um, you can use this to do many other things. Here we just showed an example where we took a real, uh, a real world network from a Makaki brain data set, but it's just as an example to show that you can also compute these eigenvalues from real networks. And so here's the number of uh, group interactions that you, you have at different uh, sizes. And then here's the um, Lyapunov spectrum for each order separately. And here you can see the difference of the full Lyapunov spectrum if you only look at pairwise interactions in blue and how it changes when you take into account uh, the higher order interactions, the group interactions. I have a question. Um, in this case, what's your simplicial complex? Are you taking, like, say, a tetrahedron made up of, like, four triple-wise interactions to be one, like, subsimplicial complex? Yes. There's different ways of... That's a discussion I also wanted to touch more to in the end, but in this case, so there's different ways of computing them also from pairwise interactions of building them. In this case, we build it as a clique complex, it's called. So if you have a clique, so if you have three nodes that are all connected together, we promote this as a three node interaction. So sub, sub complete graphs, like <coughs> yeah, sub it's, graphs that are complete. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's the way we do it. There's other yeah, ways to do it. Yeah. Um, so summary to this first, ah, sorry, yeah, go ahead. No, 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 I'm so sorry. No, no, it's fine. interrupting you so much. Um, <laughs> the, I just, for the sake of my understanding for the rest of the talk, um, you know, I understand that the Laplacian in the standard case has, you know, a relationship to harmonic functions, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I, my understanding is that within topology, you have Hodge Laplacians, which are higher order generalizations of Laplacians that have specific relations to harmonic functions. Mm -hmm. So does, do your Laplacians have a particular relation to harmonic functions? It's, not, it's also something I was going to touch uh, uh, later on, but um, so we don't deal with Hodge Laplacian, so it's not, it's not the same with the harmonics and all that. Um, to get these, usually you, there's basically another parallel line of research where here we only have phases on the nodes of the network and then make these, fa these nodes interact in groups. You can also have phases on each of the group interactions. So you could define a phase on the triangle interaction. And when you start doing these, so you have to, like topological signals, they're sometimes called, then you can define another, in another way this, uh, this dynamics and use the Hodge theory and Hodge Laplacian. Then you have another Laplacian and then you can get all of that. Here, we, we don't get all of that. It's, it's different. So is there a specific relation between them? That's a very good question, and that's, um, I've tried to to look into that and to see if there is a, how we can link them. I think there we can somehow, but but there's not there's not really results on that. Okay. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hesitated to talk about that at the beginning or at the end. I put it at the end, but um, so summary for this part, we just showed you. I just showed you the model with these group interactions. Um, and we generalize this pairwise Laplacian to any group interactions size. And then we see that, of course, it can affect the dynamics. And here, what we saw was that it seems that when you include these group interactions, that you, you will make the synchronization more stable. But that's something that, in a sense, is trivial in this case, if we can say, because you just add more attractive interactions, coupling. So it will make the system more stable. But that's something actually we looked into more in the second part of what I'm going to tell you. OK, so do they always promote synchronization or not? And there's basically uh, 
there was two open questions that we looked into for the next part is that one, because there's a few examples of previous studies that show that it seems that it, it makes things more stable. Uh, and it seems also physically plausible because when you have group interactions, you information can spread faster because it's going to spread to more nodes at, at, at the same time. Um, and the second question is, does the choice of representation matter in, in this case? And, and I'm going to tell you what I mean by that. So by representation here, I mean um, between hypergrass and supershell complexes. And what they are is different ways, different mathematical frameworks to encode these group interactions. I'm going to show you in the next slide in more in details. This but is, I have a question. So your graphs are they directed or undirected? Undirected. undirected. Yes. And so far, in many studies about these uh, group interactions, people didn't see big differences when choosing one or the other, and so it was more chosen out of technical convenience. For example, people using topological data analysis, they kind of need simplicial complexes, so they use that for that. But it's not really motivated by the actual system or what we actually see in experiments. So, so that's the question that we wanted to investigate too. So in more details, uh, hypergraphs here are basically the most general representation for group interactions. So you can basically, so you have a list of nodes and then you can have a list of what we call then hyper edges, which can be uh, a list of uh, any number of nodes basically. So. You could have here a, a pairwise link that's one, two, that could be this one, for example, and then two, three, that could be this one. But then you could also have a, a triangle interaction that would be two, four, five, that would be here, the, 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 yellow, uh, the yellow set. And there's no restriction, there's no constraint on that representation. Uh, the simplicial complex is a special case of hypergraphs where you also have an, a, an additional condition of inclusion. So if you have uh, this triangle here of two, four, five, to be a simplicial complex, you also need to add its edges or its faces. So you need to add here this pairwise interaction and this pairwise interaction, which we represent here as these dark links. So that's an additional condition. And as I was saying, people sometimes choose one or the other out of rather technical convenience. But of course, it would be nice to be able to know what is actually happening in nature, if uh, that makes sense. And so we, we use the multi-order Laplacian to look at this. So here we restrict ourselves to pairwise interactions and to triplet interactions. So only triangle in orange and blue. And one thing that we did is also, uh, I told you that if you have different coefficients here, it's gonna change the speed. So to make everything comparable and the same here, we divided by two to scale so that everything is comparable. Okay, and the, the, the further thing that we did to be able to really compare these orders and to make it fair and not to just add coupling strength was to constrain the total coupling strength. So here now, gamma one is gonna be one minus alpha and gamma two is gonna be alpha. So that the sum of both is always gonna be one. And so instead of just adding triplet interactions, we kind of, when we add them, we decrease the strength of the pairwise interaction to maintain things fair. And now, uh, so this is a, just a visual representation of what happens when you increase alpha. So alpha equals zero is basically just pairwise and alpha equals one is just triplets and then you go between the two. And so um, we looked into that and we again computed the, the Lyapunov exponent to check the stability of the system uh, of the fully, full synchronization and as alpha was uh, increased. And we did that for hypergraphs and simplicial complexes. For hypergraphs, we build them as random hypergraphs. So you can build, for example, a Nerder Schrenny pairwise graph by just having a probability P1 of linking edges. Here we also have a probability P2 of linking triangles, basically. So we have these uh, random hypergraphs. And we see that as alpha is increased, basically the, the value here uh, decreases of uh, the Lyapunov exponent. So things become more stable. But it's kind of the opposite when we looked at uh, simplicial complexes. Uh, the, the trend was basically just um, opposite. So it looks from this that it's not, only, it's not always promoting or impeding synchronization. It's gonna depend a bit on the actual representation and maybe the structure. So here you're still using the cliques to build your simplicial complexes, right? Did you, is this also true if you use other methods? 
Very good question. So actually here we did it in, in two different ways. Uh, one of the ways was to build it as a click complex, like, like you were saying. Another way was to build it as a click complex, but with also a probability of, of filling the empty triangles to not have them all. We had a, a slight displacement, but the trend was the same. And we also did it by uh, filling, so taking the hypergraphs and then uh, fulfilling the inclusion condition by adding all the edges. And we still had like a slight displacement, but still the same trend. So we tried various methods that were available, and it seems that it's, it holds. Um, how do you define your uh, Laplacian and the hypergraph case? Did you explain that? Maybe I missed it. It's just, this, it's just the same. So you have the, because you, in the Laplacian here, so OK. To define your simplicial complex, you have AIJ, and then at the let me show you. I remember this. You explained the simplicial complex version. But so here, it, no, actually, the one I showed here actually is, is the hypergraph because this is that the triplet interactions are not constrained. You can have you have B I J K, so you have a tensor, and anything can be uh, have a triplet interactions with no restriction on the pairwise interactions. But if you have the simplicial complex, say the click complex, then this B I J K is going to be restricted and is going to be equal to A I J A J K A K I, because to have an interaction I J K, you also need to have the pair. I can write this if you want. To have the pairwise I J, pairwise J K, and pairwise K I. Okay, so what you explained before was the hypergraph version. Yeah, exactly. It was the general general version. Yeah, hypergraph. Yeah. So exactly, we use the same Laplacian in both cases, the, the one I showed, just that in one case it's more restricted just from the structure, basically. Okay. So this holds true. Uh, we always, no matter what we did, we saw that trend with simplicial complexes. Uh, with hypergraphs, in some parameter spaces, you can, you can play a bit. And then we also saw some different behaviors with like non-monotonous and some, yeah. On the previous slide. Yeah. Yeah. So, is it that when you increase this alpha, uh, the network doesn't read synchronization, or is it that the synchronized state becomes less stable? It becomes less stable. It still reaches synchronization because also we made sure that the graph was always connected at either the pairwise level or the triangle levels. Because if you, in the end, have only triangles but the triangles don't make the graph connected, then it's not going to synchronize. Here it does. So it's just making things more or less stable, but it always synchronizes. So as, um, as an underlying reason, is it the, the increase in this triplet interaction or the decrease in the pairwise interaction? Because you have this limit that the overall interaction should be one. So is it that when you increase alpha, you effectively decrease the pairwise interaction? Yes. And that leads to the reduction in stability. Exactly. Exactly. That's the, exactly. So I'm confused by a small point, which is um, when alpha equals zero, wouldn't the two things be the same? Because inclusion is trivial. They, mm, no, because um, if you, so, no, because then you don't have the same number of edges. Because if you want to start from a hypergraph and add, uh, make the inclusion condition work, then you have to add edges, pairwise edges, and then here it's only pairwise edges, so it won't be the same. Um, here also I changed the parameters because it was easier to show it, but if you take a hypergraph like this and add these uh, edges, this, the green curve instead of being there will start from here because you will have the same triangles because you don't add any triangles, and then will go down like this. Yeah, because you add edges. Does that make sense? Okay. So you can have different shapes of curves, but the main shape that we saw was, was that one. So we tried to understand that from a theoretical point of view then. Um, and I'm going to try to explain it to you because it's simpler intuitively in the simplicial complex case. Um, and it has to, to do with a rich get richer effect. So, and with the degree heterogeneity happening in the network. So 
this is a not heterogeneous network in terms of the degree distribution, right? Every node has the same number of neighbors. And then you can get the more heterogeneous networks where, networks where some of the nodes have a lot of neighbors, but um, others have much less. Okay. And in pairwise networks, if you have higher degree heterogeneity, so if you're more here, you're going to have a decreased stability of synchronization. With triangles, we saw that if you have a higher degree heterogeneity of the triangles, uh, sorry, the degree heterogeneity at the triangle level is higher than the degree heterogeneity at the pairwise level. And why is that? Is basically imagine you have a, a random graph, okay, with just pairwise uh, interactions. And now you're gonna fill the triangles made by the, where there are triangles in the in this graph, okay? So this means that you're gonna get you're gonna give a triangle to nodes that already have more connections. So these nodes that already have more connections than the others are gonna get even richer in terms of connections because that's where you're gonna add the triangles. And because of that, uh, so so you're gonna basically by adding these triangles and getting the simple complex, make everything more degree heterogeneous and decreased stability, basically. And that doesn't happen in the hypergraphs because in the hypergraphs you can add these triangles anywhere. You don't need to add them uh, where to the nodes that already have many neighbors. You can, there's no restriction on that. And that's the explanation and we have uh, analytical derivations that you can find in, in the paper. So that's the summary for this, this last part and then I'm gonna have a few more words, but basically we saw that these group interactions were uh, promoting uh, synchronization in the hard, hard, random hypergraphs, but it was the opposite in simple complexes. And it has to do with how the representation affects the degree heterogeneity. And so it's kind of an argument to say that the representation should be chosen carefully because it can affect structure and then dynamics. So it, it's not just that you can choose it without any reason or argument. Um, if you're interested in this type of group interactions, uh, we basically built a Python library to be kind of the network X of group interactions because there wasn't. I mean, there was some, but not how we wanted it. <laughs> so if you're interested, just have a look. Also, all the codes that are used in, in, in these papers, they're also available inside this library, but it's more general than that. Uh, there's even tutorials and everything. And the take home message in general was that, uh, so we knew that already, but uh, group interactions can change the actual dynamics, and we can study that also in some settings with the multi order Laplacian, and we saw that they do not always promote sync, and that this choice of representation has an impact. Um, just maybe to finish, I don't know how many more minutes I have, but to open the disc, I'm not stopped, so. Uh, to open the discussion uh, related to actually your question, there's different lines of research when including uh, group interactions uh, to oscillatory dynamics. And one of them is the one that we did today with just phases on the nodes. Another one is more, they call it Hodge-like, and where you can add also phases on the triangle itself, for example. And then you use another set of tools and then you get also different dynamics. And it would be nice, I agree, to link the two. And I've been thinking a bit about that. Also, it's not so clear uh, which one actually represent better uh, real experimental data. So, yeah. Um, that uh, brings me to my next point, is that I build these simplicial complexes, as I said, for example, from click complexes by filling triangles and things like that. Uh, it would be nice to have real data set that actually have uh, group interactions in them measured directly and not just inferred from filling up uh, there was links. Uh, there's a few, there's hopefully gonna be more. I mean, it would be nice to have more, but the, the few that we found are, uh, we put some of them here, and uh, we also took some of them to this from this other uh, repository, so you can go have a look if you want to play with them. Um, and based on that, also when you don't have uh, direct experimental evidence or measurements for these group interactions, then Another way is to kind of infer them and maybe in some smarter ways than just just filling up uh, triangles. 
And there's a few recent papers on that, including uh, a one that's a bit less recent, but also from Arkady's group on specifically for phase dynamics to reconstruct these type of uh, triangular interactions, but also now uh, more recent ones on group interactions inference more in general, basically, from data. Um, final thoughts. I would like, it would be nice if we could compare them and see what type of model actually works better for real life experiments. And also about the, the influence of the choice of the coupling function forms, because I know this can change things. And that's it. Those are the people I worked with on these two projects. I'd like to thank the organizers. It was very nice to be here with you. And that's it, basically, if you have any questions. <laughs>